Long story short is that um, the work of the LCA would not exist without the support of Sabina Platten African Charities and the research done, uh, which Magdalena will refer to. Um, also, we uh, I just want to mention that. So the question is, um, who is Magdalena Bermejo? And this little slide is saying to you. This is basically where she's going to talk to us from tonight. Now, this is a, not the area where she is, but this photo gives you an impression of the rainforest and the size of it. And um, so when she speaks tonight, this is where the bigger area where she's going to talk to us. So we have a number of challenges tonight, and that is she's on the equator, in the rainforest, just gone through a rainstorm, and we really hope that the connectivity will stay stable. Then also, you have to listen very careful, carefully, because Magdalena speaks in Catalan with an English accent. So make sure that you follow her all the time. Um, but a little bit more about Magdalena. Um, so, this is Magdalena Bermejo with a handsome hunk of a husband called Herman. And just a little bit something about Magdalena. She was born in Bred and grew up in Barcelona. And Magdalena studied psychology. And she got various degrees in neuropsychology and neuroscience. And she worked with autistic children for more than three years. And then she started working in the zoo in Barcelona. And she started becoming more and more interested in the primates. And eventually she moved to Senegal, where she studied the chimps in Yucalacoba National Park. And she got her PhD in primatology uh, doing the studies there. She then moved to Congo, where she studied the bonobos and other primates, apes. And she and Herman have been living in Congo for just over 20 years in these forests and been studying the various apes or primates um, in that area for more than 20 years. She also worked in Gabon, uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea, and she's got incredible experience and she's a world-renowned a primatologist and scientist. The Odzala Kokoa National Park in the Republic of Congo houses 13,000 square kilometers of pristine Congolese rainforest and one of the highest densities of western lowland gorillas. At the edge of the park is Ngaga Gorilla Research Camp, located in the center of the largest concentration of gorillas in Africa. This camp is of global importance for primate research. Here, long-term studies are changing and shifting several theories on these magnificent apes. Cutting-edge research from the last 20 years is revealing fascinating new insights on the social structure and behavior of these gorillas. <laughs> The effective use of non-invasive methods such as camera traps and genetics reveal that these gorillas' behavior is completely different to that of the mountain gorilla. Data has been collected at Ngaga Research Camp since 2015 and a total of 40 groups are currently being studied. The future collection of data, comprising of individual recognition and movement within the forest matrix, will answer many questions, bringing new and unique insights. We 
the the title is that I choose as different phases of the rainforest from DRC to RC. And in fact, I will say you that this is the first surprise that I give you because I will talk only to from RC perspective. But uh, why I did that is because all the things that we were developing in Congo, uh, the inspiration and the real histories are coming from the RC. They are examples of people that they are making conservation, local people that is committed for their population of bonobos. And I never expected something like that coming from Senegal or other countries. I never expect this attitude with wildlife. And it's something that at the beginning I thought that is only that I was lucky. And then suddenly I realized in the two years that we were there, that there is something very deep in the forest that is coming out of our mindset. And it merits to work very closely with people in the rainforest to understand this reality. And all the things that we were developing in Congo is because these two years in DRC were extremely, extremely touching to us. Then we can pass to the next slide. And I want that now you make an exercise to be relaxed. The only one that needs to be a little nervous for my Catalan English is me. But try to feel in these pictures that I am now projecting, try to feel what you see. This time I will not talk a lot. I will only try that you fix the eyes, you fix the colors, you feel something. And instead of using your brain, try to feel your stomach, the other brain that we have. Because you will understand later why. We can see the other, the next one, because now is a, is a, is a flow with the motions of this picture. Uh, of course, if I used a gorilla as the first picture to put you in an emotion, it's for something. I know that everybody in the world loves gorillas and is the passion and the excitement of everybody. But seeing the gorillas in the middle of the Marantasi forest, where I never expect that I needed to study these animals in this kind of forest, was really a lot of different emotions. First time I say, why we need to study here? We will change the place. And secondly, I was trying to focus and make my job. But I never would make my job if these people that you see in this picture, these faces on the right, and this magical atmosphere of uh, Ozala was not there. Uh, working with a tracker, someone that is able to follow the tracks of the animals without losing them, is like walking with the animals. It's not even tracking. I will say walking because it merits a proper attitude and you really need to listen in an open and humble way. And this humble way is the thing that I learned with these people. And we have the honor to have workshops with people from different regions of Central Africa, all mixing during one month, trying to be the best one the first 24 hours. And after that, the second day, everybody understood the advantage to learn about the others. And it's two, three days, all of them, they're improving their expertise. Then I will give a, a big, big thank you to these trackers that makes my life beautiful and my profession with meaning. And I wanted that absolutely are linking at the same level to the wildlife. If we see the next one, slide, I know that Chris loved that and a lot of people love that. I am not the style of person that uh, likes to show these pictures when several years before, uh, but I think it has sense here. This is how we began in, in Congo. We built this uh, house on the right, white house, of course. I am Mediterranean. I need something white with the, with the light. And uh, you see here one of the sessions where the trackers are coming back uh, during the workshop. Uh, there is the master trackers that are making the analysis of how the expertise is done. And they were giving qualifications about that. We can pass to another one. 
that is changing the camp and I am living now in Ngaga. This place was in Zay and we moved to Ngaga and I will say you the reasons why. We will see the next slide, please. Um, yes, well, it seems that I don't see very well. I am losing good uh, connection, but uh, I hope that you will see well. This is the Ngaga Field Station Network uh, today in one interview with Taylor Congo. And we have uh, the more amazing forest also of Manantasi forest, but in this particular period was a little cut. It's a still nice visibility surrounding. If you see that tomorrow morning is a complete forest that you don't see anything now. Um, you, you can see also on the right that Herman is with a team of students from Brazil University and they are initiated in the GPS uh, function and uh, they are prepared to begin the, the study on the forest. They are first day in the forest. They are first feeling in the middle of the forest. Now we jump again to this species of schizophrenia, going for humans and going for apes. And this is coming from Congo, but it's inspired in some examples also in DRC. And I call golden faces in the forest because it's, it's the soul of the forest. It's people that has legends and myths and can explain the behavior of the animals and the origin of the humans and the apes like living together in some period, very old time, and representing this dancing. This woman is 70 years old. When she's dancing, representing that, it takes three days, three nights, and is moving exactly like an adolescent of 17 years old. As I say, she is very shy. Uh, she was a person that probably takes time for me to, to really understand her, and she understand me but we were at the end very friends. And she showed me a lot about attitudes, respect, being in silence when things seem very hard and wait at, until the, last, the next moment. Then I want to recognize this person. And uh, then we mix again this, this group. If, the first group that was habituated uh, of Westerland and Gorilla and uh, is in the reserve of phone. Later we will see the maps and we, we will escape a little of this confusion of faces and, and humans and apes. But I wanted that you preserve this memory of this face and these eyes because we'll be connected with another chapter of this presentation. So I don't forget that. And then we can go for the next one. The next one is a lot of people that knows very well Congo knows that is the initiation of the youngest that are going to the adult phase of their life. And I know this kid at the beginning when um, he was really not even in knowledge that he, he will pass also for that. And I, and I recognize this mix of color, these expressions that are masked with the colors and uh, how they, they pass these three days uh, with pepper in the eyes, um, not eating properly, not sleeping all night, but suddenly this day they feel that they go for another thing. They follow a transformation. Um, it's difficult that we understand these ceremonies in the same way that they understand that. But it's curious that now in, in a lot of moments in my life, even when it was a ball at time, or when is the war, or when is now the coronavirus, and, and we need to reinvent ourselves. I think that this kind of transformation and this expression of this kid, because without this mask, you will see a kid of 12 years old, is something that impressed me a lot and impressed me also the, the eye contact of, of the animals in general when, when you have an, uh, a fortuit encounter with them. You have these colors of the head of this man on the right that uh, is, is the father, very proud that his son will do that. And um, in Congo, it's, it's a practice that is especially in the area that we are around Ojala. And a lot of people that is living for years in, in Brasta is coming here and bring his, his son to practice this ceremony. Now we will, we will go for recreated in the last phase that I was choosing here 
is a girl, is a girl that uh, was very curious from the beginning with me and he was asking a lot of things. It's the same thing. Eh? Why that? Why you are doing that? Why you are not scared about gorillas? Uh, why is it important that uh, you are doing that in this place? And why you choose this place? And uh, it was very young in this moment and say, why you choose this place instead of Fudzala? And uh, in, in this particular moment, I look her eyes and I say, probably for your eyes, probably because I, I want that you see what I am doing and I want that the animals look you also. And now this girl is, is a mother, a new baby that is very young. And uh, I, I, will, I will show to, to her also that uh, this was exposed and I was talking about her. She's also very shy. A lot of people shy surrounding me. And now we can go for let's situate it, our place. Let's situate it Congo. I think that on, on the left you, you see Congo and we circle in red Ozala and Losi. And in the middle we have more detail of Ozala because we need to understand that it's more than 30,000 kilometers square. And in the southwest we have this circle red that is indicating Losi. A focal point that it seems pretty small point, insignificant compared to Ozala. But from the day number one was very significant because this area was created as a reserve of phone because people, communities, request to the government. It's the first one created like that in Congo. It's the one that is still every minister, every person involved in conservation in the country feels something special. And I think that um, I have my, my friend and my colleague here, that is Paul, that knows very well Lossi, as I know also. He was working there also with us in a very difficult moment. And uh, we have, uh, this area is 384 kilometers square, more or less. And then the map of the, the right, I introduce because uh, the, the way where we are going, slowly but for sure, is in this orange area, is the area that will be considered probably as a category six EUCN that can be used for communities, but not used for logging or any more bigger company like that. We have um, in the northeast this space of triangle that is in Gaga, that is where you see the pictures that uh, I was there showing you the forest. And this is the big uh, challenge that we have now also, that this corridor is uh, probably is one or two signatures. There is 24 signatures and 20, 22 is already done, but probably it's two that needs to be finished. But things, important things takes time. So it is like that and we need to, to deal with that. And then we can go for the next one. And just to introduce you, uh, in the period of Ebola virus, then you see the map with certain points affected and on the left. And then I only introduce briefly that. Um, one paper was published in Science where we uh, show that it's 5,000 gorilla dead. And these two figures shows that there is an arrow, red arrow there, shows a line, a very thin line in blue that is indicating where exactly is stop the transmission of the virus. Then all the lines in dots white is not presence of gorillas or chimpanzees from the transit that we were doing. And on the right, there is these dark points, more dark if the density is bigger, if more indices are there. And we are for gorillas and we have for chimpanzees. We can go for the next one. It is complementing this, giving some details. Then this blue line that we are showing in the previous one slide, here is with the shape of the river in blue. And you see all these um, circles that is indicating the home range of different groups that we were following after the first Ebola outbreak affecting uh, Losi area. And we have in 2002, uh, the half of the reserve affected for Ebola and a lot of animals dying. And in 2003, one year later in the same period in October, 
uh, we began to study all the groups that were in the in the half in the eastern half of the Losi. Uh, we make this effort to follow a very very uh, deep at minimum seven groups. There is one that um, is this part that that there is less data that you see in the in the in the chart. And we follow all these nesting sites is situated until in our follow we see that they cross the home range of another group that we began to follow. And uh, we follow that from north to south to see how the days, two weeks, three weeks are passing and other groups are infected during this time. And we follow in each of the group also how many individuals are disappearing and in which speed are disappearing in the group. I don't need to say you will go, we, we will touch again our stomach and we, we will feel that, what means that? It means that walking in the forest, where all the forest and the trail systems are empty, the smell of the forest is like rotten meat in any place. And all the trails that you recognize, this gorilla that I indicated at the beginning, I, I fix it. It was very special because it was black back individual and he's occupating all the trails. He loved to follow the trails, even 500 meters, even sometimes a kilometer. And each time that we were following these trails, this eyes is coming to our mind. That we needed to concentrate. This kind of work needs concentration. And this is how we balance during this period to learn how to deal with these emotions that we feel, how to deal with this message of our colleagues Brighton uh, saying, I am so sorry that you lost your habituated groups. And our only answer was, uh, there is 5,000 following our calculation dying. Then I think that the habituated ones has not the same context as 5,000. Um, yes, the next one, you, you see again this, the group that we were following, the first one to be habituated. And in this place, we were also lucky that uh, they are consuming specific trees, this is two species different, to eat the wood. And they can use the same rotten dead tree for two, three, until five years. To eat that, they practice a hole, and it's really very difficult to get that. And everybody is waiting online and practicing the consumption at the same place then the concentration of saliva, if some of the individuals are infected, is really high. Then the high potential for within group transmission is high. And at the same time, there is other groups that are visiting the place. And because the animals stay for longer there, doing that, two, three hours, then this focal point is also a risky place for between group transmission. Let's go for a faces again that we touch. I'm so sorry to that, to transport you from one side to the other, but I wanted that you feel some part of what we were living in this period. Then we have some animal death. Um, there is one in the left, one female, uh, that is a carcass from three days, calculated. And on the right, we have a gorilla death also that is at minimum three weeks. We calculated three weeks. Um, we find in total 60 different animals dead. Uh, it's very difficult to find the carcass. In a certain point, we began to be close to the river and streams because we understood that they can be really very tired and approaching to water. Um, and then it works. But I'm sure that there was a lot more in other places. There is not significant difference that to find in one place or another but it's very difficult because uh, you can pass very close and you don't see that nothing. And in three, four days can disappear a carcass very quickly. Um, we can see the next one. Let's go now for science, but science with people. Other kind of people. Now don't read this, this, these letters, forget about that. It's an organogram. And then it's, you can be noticed that we are doing a lot of things that to work with different people, different personalities, different expertise and trying to maintain what we live during Ebola. That is a time that 50 persons we were working together and I will never forget the impression of something very difficult to do and something with a big pleasure 
that we were doing. And here we have techno people of Zoological Society of London. We have people of Stanford University close to this uh, person. We have in some point uh, people of uh, the uh, Institute of Evolutionary Biology in uh, Barcelona that is one of the best in European. We have Princeton University, we have Doñana Station, and we have these people on the left uh, with more close contact uh, to them uh, that they are making amazing work uh, in this uh, station. I need to thank to all of them because I am really shy in certain things, but I am really very heavy pursuing people and trying to make understand that they can do a lot of things out of their comfort area. I know that all these universities is fantastic, but I know also that the continent, this continent, has amazing things to discover and needs amazing brains to work together. Then we can go for the next one. And let's see other, other here they are uh, installing the, the master two students of the University of Brazzaville that are central part of our field station network. What we pretend is that they are not running for foreign countries only. They can go there, they can visit and they can work for some time there. But what we want is that these other universities, they wish really to work here in, in this part of Africa. And I am very proud of, of these youngers. It takes longer. We work before with other students, but I never see an energy like that and capacity to work together. And uh, we, we were making workshops. We are preparing them on the field at the same time. I was bringing them to the, to the College of Mbomo. For me, it's very special, this College of Mbomo on the right picture. It's the place where uh, we introduced uh, Madame Sabine Platner to, to Mbomo. It's a place that everybody was crying in a certain moment for a certain representation of the, of the teachers. And uh, these students of Braza, that they were thinking that they are very clever, they were astonished how the class was this particular day. We were sitting on, on the last part of this pupitre, and then we, we exchanged with the, with the teacher, and we changed with the, with the youngers. And the expression was, how clever are these kids? We were stupid. We were not like that. I, I say also that probably that the ones that are going to the college is because they are very committed. The other ones are walking in Mbomo. And we have another one that more team, more people, because believe me, we were really working with a, a lot of different people. And there is some ones that are now pushing me. They are now calling me. I am not pushing them now. They call me and they say, when we begin, even if it's virtual, we need to begin to, to next step. And these people here, you see, you see that they are laboratory persons working in the genomic study of gorillas, genomic variation in gorillas. And it means that we will study this genomic variation in all species and superspecies of gorillas. First time that will be happen something like that. Max Plan did enormous fantastic thing with chimpanzees on that, but never with, uh, with gorillas. And then we, we go for that. And we have a lot of samples already analyzed. Um, I think that most part of you, and we go for the next one, I like a little to, to talk about these methods. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's simple. From 2009, we are following three habituated groups. This is providing high resolution movement data. Then what we try to understand is not only how more or less they move, each hundred meters how they move. How is moving the other groups a little overlapping with him each hundred meters in one specific day? How they are changing areas? What is the reason of these changes? And then they study the life, the lifetime uh, uh, story of, of each group of gorillas. But we don't have not, not only that, we have also this possibility to study through camera traps more than 45 groups of gorillas. This is unique in Central Africa, completely unique. And it's because they consume here, not the wood that I was talking in, uh, in Losi, here they are eating roots in a specific Marantes tree that is very common in Africa in general, but is never observed, used for gorillas or even chimpanzees in any other place. 
then we are lucky because they are using the same tree for that we know now is 14 years. Imagine if we have 60 different trees disseminated in 300 kilometers square and we can follow exactly all the changes of this population. Then all the research questions will be at the scale of population. Of course, all the computer scientists and all the ecologists are joining one to the other because it's impossible to work all this data if we are not going in team and using proper technology. Then let's go for some pictures, but because you already see uh, the video, then it's more superficial here in these pictures. But I was trying, what sometimes I do with the students is that uh, look the pictures, several, several pictures at the same time, and I try to understand their mindset trying to ask very quickly <clears throat> what you see, quick, what is the one that takes your attention first, and then trying to explain the more details of the movement, attitudes, distance, how one movement can uh, reflect in the movement of, of another individual. This is probably my autistic studies because Ma I learn Ma with the kids. Yeah? Ma sorry to interrupt, Chris speaking. I just want to take uh, yeah. my, on the right slide showing methods. Yeah. Good, thank you. Sorry yeah, yeah. about that. Sorry, then you can pass to the next one. But as I say, the, the, you see all the video. Um, of course, on the left below, you see two silverbacks. Uh, you can see also in the, in the bias, you can see that. But you see different things. What happens with the bias? What happens with the root mining sites? This root mining can be areas very big. And are digged during 14 years, then you can imagine that uh, it could be an area very, very, very big and plenty of holes. And sometimes one silverback can be in a hole and you don't see him. Um, the particularity is that there is not a bay that is attracting anybody to the bay. Is a lot of trees that they visit and a social network of gorillas using these trees that you can follow. And complementing the bays with this study in the root mining. Well, I don't want to, to say now that it's fantastic because it's, it's very interesting. Let's say that it's very interesting. And if we go for the next um, slide, I introduce some of the results very briefly of 2019 and later 2020. This was published in Proceedings. And what we show through genetic study and following the three focal groups is that there is an entire group meetings and interacting. There is frequent exchange between groups and there is group changing over a period of few days. With genetics, we see individuals that are from one group that move to another group, stay three, four, five days, and then they come back to their group. All these adolescents are constantly moving. And probably is one of the reasons that they are very tolerant between them and they can encounter one to the other and have peaceful interactions between them with a certain complexity that shows that it's not a rare situation. We saw, I think that we saw now more than 150 times directly these interactions between different groups. There is a multi-level social uh, structure because they recognize the different groups. They don't only recognize the neighbors, they can have knowledge about the other uh, groups more far away and constituting communities. And if we go to the next um, slide, we, we, can, we can see more pictures about that. Um, of course, to educate the youth in the college or in the, in the, even in, in the small, small kids, it's very interesting how they observe the movement of the gorillas. Uh, and then when we will have a little more time, I would like to exchange with Zan and Julie that I know that you are here um, to try to, to go in, in certain level with them because they are very good observers. When I was studying in the zoo, Barcelona Zoo, uh, all the kids were extremely clever interpreting the movements and what happens in the group. 
and for one moment they can be the clever ones and not the ones that are only learning and then we go we, we go for the next one because we don't want to to go very slow in this presentation perhaps we can exchange all of all of you with me and me with you uh, the results for 2020 that I uh, choose is one published in scientific reports of nature and even if they are very collaborative between them you know scientists is always adopting about things and they say oh yeah but uh, what happens with I see a lot of gorillas that are using one area but in, in the, the encounters are very good but when they hear far away 500 meters the movements and they interpret that this other group is there then suddenly something happens. It seems for me like territorial. We are not using the word very strong that all the people, all scientists were, oh no, it's not territorial. Let's say Western gorilla space use suggests territoriality and makes everybody happy. Um, we have these areas, the home range, the core regions of the home range of one group against neighbors as patterns common to human evolution. And we have also at the same time these large zones of mutual tolerance with a strong defensive response for more dominant groups. It's not the same if it's a mature group uh, and a young group or the number of individuals or the number of females that are in the group. Then this extreme that we say about humans territorial based violence and also engaging in the strong affiliative intergroup relationship, we can think that humans, we are like that also. Let's try to see the both sides of the thing. In all my life, I am trying to see the both sides of the mindset of the other people. Sometimes I need to be shy. I need to be in this flow in, in my mind to try to understand things in another way, see things in another way and transform things. And I hope that my message now is I would like to preserve some of the things that we were living the last two months because we need to transform our reality. We need to be more human beings at the same time that this conservation for nature is more deep and beginning in, in, in my stomach, as Chris said in the other time. These emotions need to, to go for this combination between facts emotion, feeling, understanding, patience, perseverance, and perspective. And I think that these three PPP, this is for Ruben. Ruben, don't forget when you are studying now that uh, you need to go for that. That uh, the patience without uh, perspective and perseverance, there is nothing. Then you need to mix these three things. And uh, I, I want really to thank again um, all the people that make possible this dream. There is no separation between my normal life and my passion. And when I was a kid, and I, th and I think that Chris will love that, my dream, I was only seven years old, um, my inspiration was Marie Curie. I wanted to be Marie Curie because uh, it's a researcher. And I see in this biography and the way that he's doing, is like a crazy person uh, focusing research with his husband that was focusing research and I was thinking how wonderful could be flow in something that you love and you don't see any difference between holidays and and your work and this is a privilege a lot of people say me that and I hope that for a lot of people will be a privilege in future And um, I, I don't think I, don't, I will not read the acknowledgement, but I will, I will emphasize that um, we have funding for Sabine Planner. It was very important to consolidate my, my part of communities with my part of research with conservation. European Union, DJ Wit, uh, Spain, UNEP, Life Web. Uh, European Union with ECOFAC was a long time also, making census in, in Ojala, developing uh, things with Fiona Maisel, other colleagues. We were a lot of researchers at the beginning working together also, at the beginning especially. After that, it was less action in research. Now again, is that at the University of Barcelona. And um, I thank all the researchers that uh, support me 
because I am really a very insistent person. And the trackers and the communities that let me navigate in their life is a pleasure. And it will be always a pleasure, even when it's very hard. And, and I am struggling with, with some moments that is very difficult for me. But I try my best and I will do all my life.